have diabetes, your body does not use or store sugar properly. This can cause changes in your veins, arteries, and capillaries that carry blood throughout your body, including your eyes. These changes can harm your vision. There are two types of diabetic retinopathy that can lead to vision loss. One type is called non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or NPDR. Another type is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or PDR. With non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or NPDR, damaged blood vessels in the retina begin to leak fluids, including small amounts of blood, into the retina. Sometimes deposits of fats may leak inside the retina. These deposits are called hard exudates. With macular edema, fluid leaking from the retina's blood vessels can cause the macula to swell or thicken. Because the macula is responsible for our central or pinpoint vision, macular edema interferes with clear vision. Macular ischemia occurs when small blood vessels close. In this case, your macula is affected because it no longer receives enough blood to work properly. During an eye exam, your ophthalmologist will dilate your pupils and examine your retina. Because certain conditions with NPDR, such as macular edema and macular ischemia, occur inside the layers of retina tissue, it may be recommended that you have a test called fluorescein angiography, or another called optical coherence tomography, known as OCT. These diagnostic procedures allow your ophthalmologist to see blood vessels within the retina. With PDR, many blood vessels in the retina close, preventing adequate blood flow to the retina. The retina responds to this problem by trying to grow new blood vessels. However, these new abnormal vessels do not provide proper blood flow. They can also bleed as well as lead to scar tissue, which may cause the retina to wrinkle or even detach. If similar vessels grow abnormally in the front of the eye, they can block the drainage channels of the eye and cause high pressure and possibly glaucoma. Both your central and side vision can be affected by PDR. Laser surgery is often used to reduce swelling of the macula. It's usually performed in an office setting. Here's how it works. For macular edema, the laser is focused on the retina outside the center of the macula. The laser is not applied directly to the center of the macula, since this would reduce central vision. The main goal of treatment is to prevent more vision loss by sealing off leaking blood vessels that interfere with the proper function of the macula. Treatment for PDR is often done with laser, and it is called PRP, or panretinal photocoagulation. It is also known as scatter photocoagulation. The treatment is usually performed in an office setting. For comfort during the procedure, an anesthetic is applied to the eye. The laser is applied to the peripheral retina, avoiding the central macula. This causes the blood vessels to shrink and often prevents them from growing again in the future. It also decreases the chances of the blood vessels bleeding into the vitreous or causing a retinal detachment. In some cases, multiple laser treatments may be necessary. Despite having laser surgery, some people with PDR may still develop further problems. Your doctor may recommend treating your PDR with what is called an anti-VEGF drug. Anti-VEGF drugs target a specific chemical in your eye. This chemical, called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, is critical in causing abnormal blood vessel growth on the surface of the retina, as well as in other parts of the eye. Several drugs have been developed that can block the trouble-causing VEGF. An anti-VEGF drug can help reduce the growth of abnormal blood vessels, which helps to prevent bleeding, scar tissue, and other problems that can cause vision loss. It is possible to have a considerable amount of neovascularization and still have good vision for some time. That means that neovascularization may not be caught early enough and serious problems can occur. For instance, the abnormal blood vessels can bleed into the vitreous, the clear gel in the middle of the eye. This bleeding, called a vitreous hemorrhage, can prevent light rays from reaching the retina. 
If the hemorrhage is too large or too slow in clearing, or if your ophthalmologist discovers retinal scarring or detachment, a procedure called a vitrectomy may be necessary. Vitrectomy surgery is usually performed in the operating room on an outpatient basis. An operating microscope and small surgical instruments are used to enter the inside of the eye. Blood and scar tissue are removed. At the same time, a laser may be used to prevent further bleeding and abnormal blood vessel growth. Most people with diabetes can retain useful vision. It's important to remember that you can significantly lower your risk of vision loss by maintaining strict control of your blood sugar and any medical conditions. You must also know that diabetic retinopathy can still occur even if your blood sugar is controlled. That means that you should see your ophthalmologist at least once a year or more frequently as recommended by your eye doctor, even if you're not having any visual symptoms. Also, if you have any changes in your vision, you should call your ophthalmologist right away. To find out more about diabetic retinopathy and how to maintain your vision, talk with your ophthalmologist.